Welcome back to week four, yay! So week one, we did uh, posture, how you stand to the ball, how you stand with your club. Week two, we did grip, um, how you hold the actual club. Week three, we did the backswing. And this is week four, this is the actual downswing. So what the club and body needs to do from the top of your backswing. Now, pre-warn you, backswing is probably the hardest bit in the golf swing. Um, only for the fact is, by the time you get to the top of your backswing, and from here all the way through, probably takes less than... It's amazing, amazing rainbow. Let me show you. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. The downswing. Like I was saying, is this is probably the hardest bit to practice in golf because you've got to think in terms of the movement from the top to the bottom is probably a second or less than a second. So when people talk about that doesn't quite feel right or I'm trying to get the feel on my downswing, sometimes that is not actually possible because it's so quick. It's like driving a car 80 miles an hour from point A to point B and kind of literally how that drive felt within a metre. I hope that makes sense. So yeah, so what today is what we are going to do from the top of your backswing, how do we get your body moving, how do we get your club moving. So in the videos we have talked about how we hold it, how we stand to it, how we swing the club on the way back, and now it's what we do from the top here to the ball all the way through. As a golf coach, we all have our own ideas of where the power sources are. So for me, I believe that power sources come from the ground up the way. So feet, legs, bum, tum, arms. So for me, on the way down, it's all about the sequence of the swing, using those parts of the body in the correct way. So that is what we are going to do a little bit of today. Um, but again, just to confirm, this is a really hard bit of the golf swing and you have to be videoing it, you have to be checking out your reflection, you have to just be kind of rehearsing it time and time again because from the top of your swing to the finish of your swing, it's probably about a second, a second and a bit. So it's not that long for us to, to move fast, to move powerfully and for us to strike the ball on a tiny club face with a tiny ball, tiny club face. Okay, so we've done our, how we hold it, how we stand to it, how our posture looks. We've swung to the top of our backswing and then what on earth do we do from here? Well, most people's reaction when they first start playing is just to give it a good swipe with the arms. So what you find is basically my purple jacket is the only bit that really moves. And some people can play golf like that. Some people can get around a golf course because they're hitting the ball up in the air and it's going an okay distance. The problem with that is they're not using feet, they're not using legs. They're kind of certainly not using their bums. So they might be using a bit of their tummy, but it's predominantly chest upwards. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm kind of lifting something or I'm trying to create power, my arms aren't going to be the most powerful, powerful thing. So what I'm trying to get you to do is on the way up, we are going to try and use our legs and bum a little bit more so that when we finish our golf swing, we finish it all the way at the target. Our body is now pointing dead at the target or even slightly left of it. But you can see my nice clean shoe. You can actually see the sole of it and my back pockets instead of Ooh, that position which really hurts actually like I was saying if you swing it just with the top half of your body what you'll notice is you are straining your back for right handers you're straining your back and you're straining your right hip right knee and even kind of ankle joint because you are twisting massively on these areas but when you actually finish using your legs better you finish using your power sources, but you spring into action and you finish pointing at the target or where you want to go. So how do we get there? I hear you ask. This is the bit we're going to break it into a couple of little bits for you. Okay. And then we're going to just try and put it together. So 
we know we need to move our bottom half. We know this is the bit that sometimes doesn't move that much. So what I want you to do is just get the feel of how it moves to start with. So you're going to get your club, doesn't matter which one it is, and we're going to put your club across your hips. And what I want you to do from this position is get your feet about shoulder width. And from there, I just want you to turn your hips on the way back and on the way through. Okay, and you can do this as slowly as you want, on the way back and on the way through. And from this position, what I want you to just try and do to start off with, is even if you close your eyes and swing back, where do you feel the weight in your legs, in your bum, in your feet? Okay, so you can close your eyes just because you can kind of feel it a little bit more. You don't have to if you feel that's weird. But what I want you to try and do is just do a few swings. Where do you feel the weight is on your backswing? Where do you feel your weight moves to when you follow through? And if you don't get the feeling, literally slow it down even more and just keep repeating it until you get the feeling. Because if we don't know what our legs are doing, we're not going to be able to add the bits on top of that to kind of create that really solid sequence. So where is it on the way back? Where does it go to on the way through? Hopefully on the way back when you turn, you've turned your hips, you should feel your weight or you should feel a pull or a strain in your right bottom, buttocks and you should feel it kind of maybe in step and closer to the, the heel. So you're turning on the way back, you're really loading it into your bum and then from that position we load it back to where we started and what you should start to feel is it goes to your left heel and left out step. So you actually finish kind of loading your weight onto your left side through your heel, through your ankle, through your leg. So from front on, loading it into your right bum, loading it back, loading it into your left bum, finishing like this. So what do you do after you've moved your bum? So we've moved this and we've got this and we're working on this and we're getting this lovely finish. So actually we can do a lot of work from the top of our swing by just doing that. Okay, so I've kind of started to load it into the right part and then I allow my top half to then follow. What sometimes happens is we get to the top of our swing and everything goes. So top half and bottom half moves. So this is where, what this shot is called a slice or a cut. What you sometimes will get is a lot of right-handed golfers will hit the ball and the ball will start left of target and fly to the right. And that is called a fade, a slice, a cut. And that is usually created when the top half and the bottom half kind of follow each other. And we produce this big almighty shot, which some people don't like. Got to the top of our swing. We've started to unravel our hips. Our hips have started to turn. And if you notice what starts to happen to my club, it starts to drop behind me and then from this position I can then turn as quickly as I want all the way through to get me finishing like this but if we don't get those hips out the way to start off with our top half's never going to have any room to get into this position so hips out the way and we're trying to get this position here so that we can then get to there and make it swoosh. You may or may not know, I'm slightly obsessed with the speed sticks. There is a video or two, and there will be in lockdown, of how they work. Um, but this is a really good exercise to get that sequence of the body from ground upwards working properly. So you get any club in your bag, you get your feet together, swing to the top, step, turn. So from here, we get the feet working, we get the top half following that. We call it Happy Gilmore because there's a film, if you haven't seen it, called Happy Gilmore. Um, you need to watch it because it's probably the best um, golf film of all time. That could be a debate, but I did love it. I think it's one of the best. So from this angle, again, swing into the top of your swing, stepping, letting it go. With the bottom half is unravelling first and then the top half kind of follows it. Quite tricky, hey? Yes, it is. Um, 
I've been playing 25 years and this is probably the bit that gets practiced the most. Doesn't matter age, gender, ability, you'll notice a lot of people working on this movement. But this movement is all dependent on how you hold it, how you stand to it, how you swing it on the way back. So you can have to nail those bits first. Um, and if you don't nail those, it's so much harder to build things on top of it because it's a bit wobbly then. A um, little bit out of breath because I'm unfit. Yeah. So that's the end of our downswing video. It's a bit random I know and it's a bit, um, sometimes people find it a bit confusing but we're trying to give you bits and pieces and then you add to it and then you add a little bit more and a little bit more otherwise your brain and body will never going to be able to cope with it so we're talking at the top of your backswing we're using a, the proper sequence don't try and just lunge with the top half because one you'll create an injury two the swing's not that efficient and three we're not using our power sources which are our legs so let me know how you get on uh, if you haven't already, can you subscribe to this channel just because you'll see other videos in the future and then send it to your friends, see what they think um, and leave some comments, that'd be brilliant. Take care everyone and see you soon.